Hi kids. I hope we're enjoying our time at home. We'll be learning different ways of using nested loop. Today, we are going to be looking at the practicals of nested loop. But this will be done in nested loop in frozen. Today, we are going to be using code.org in this practical. And like we all know, if we have a browser, just go to your URL and type code.org. And when you do that, this is the page that it shows. Now, for us to be able to use our code studio, we need to sign in, put in our six letter code and our secret identity. Now, for those of you that already have a secret identity and a six letter code, thumbs up. For those of you that don't have, just send me a message or give me an email and I will give you your six letter code and your secret identity. Now, for us to be able to log into the code studio, we need to come to our top right place and type sign in. And this will enable us to enter into our code studio and code whatsoever work we want to do. And when we click on sign in, it will take us to a place where we can easily type in our six letter code and also put whatsoever we want to put. So in this place, they told us that we should enter our six later session code. I'm going to be using Primal 4 Platinum as an example. So I will just go to the six letter code of Primal 4 Platinum. Sorry guys, if I'm not using your class, don't worry, I will use it next time. Now when we click on our six letter code and click go, it will take us to the names of the PPUs in Primal 4 Platinum. So what I will just do, I will use a child's own, sorry for using yours. I will just put his secret identity and click on sign in. Now when I do that, automatically it's recognized the six letter code and the secret identity and it will open this page. Now for us to be able to know that we have signed in, at the top we will see the name, our names written boldly on it. If your name is not there, it means that you have not properly signed in. So when I click on the sign in, this page will open. Now this page comprises of all the courses that we are going to be offering in code.org. And I believe in first term, we must have done most of these that is appearing right away. Now for us to check what we are going to be looking at today, which is nested loop and frozen, we will just go down and shift to nested loop in frozen. Some of you may be wondering why am I seeing green? The green color that is showing on the cycle shows that the child has done these parts of the quiz. So I will just go to the topic which we are going to treat today which is nested loop in frozen and I'll click on the let the numbers. Now the first number there and second number the child have attempted it but I'm just going to use that as an example. And when we come here, this is our code studio. Our code studio is a place where we programmers and coders are able to program and code different blocks, putting them to, together to make them meaningful. We can use these blocks in drawing, we can use this block in placement and coding so many wonderful and useful things. Now in the code studio, we have four different sections. We have the instruction area, we have the play area, we have the toolbox area, and the workspace area. Some of you may be wondering, what is the play area? What is the toolbox area? I'm going to explain it to you. The play area is an area that is used to see whatsoever coding we have done. Whenever we finish coding, it is the play area that can display whatsoever we have done. The instruction area is the laid down instruction guidelines that is being given to any programmer. As a programmer, you are supposed to know how to listen to instruction. And in the play area and in the instruction area, you will be able to listen to instruction. Also, we have the toolbox area. The toolbox area is an area where blocks can be kept. Now, in the toolbox area, we can be able to get as many blocks as possible that we can use in coding. 
The last but not the least is the workspace area. The workspace area is always the largest area on the play, the code studio. The workspace area is where we can code. Now in the workspace area, we drag blocks from the toolbox area to the workspace area where we can code whatsoever we want to do. Now this child has been able to code some blocks. I'm not going to scatter what he has done, but I'm only going to explain what he has done. Now looking at what he has done, he has used what is called looping. I told us that loop means doing something over and over again. Now the block that we can use for looping is called the repeat block. And you can use a repeat block inside another repeat block to make the block even more fewer and simple to understand. Now this child has been able to use a repeat block inside another repeat block. Now the set width block is a block that helps to increase or decrease the line of our work. In any artist or in any artwork, the pencil must, may either be slim or tiny or the pencil may either be wide. Now the set width block helps to increase the wideness of a line. Now this child has set its width to 5. It means that it will not be very slim, it will be broad a little. And also for what he has done here, he said move forward at 30 pixels. So it means that the artist is not going to be moving forward for a longer time and turn right at 90 degrees, which means that the child wants to draw a square. But the block we are going to be focusing on today is the positional block, which is seen as the jump to the position block. Now if I click on the drop down arrow, I will find so many other options, which is random, top left, top center, top right, and so on and so forth. You can try this on your own. Now, it says that the artist should jump to, let's, let's use the middle. Let's just use the middle. Jump to the middle center. So if I click on wrong, let's see what this chart has done. It means that the artist is going to be in the middle. You see, he's drawing a square. He's drawing a square. And he's doing it how many times? Four times. Because in our, in our repeat, we said that he should repeat this action four different times. So the artist is going to draw four different times, which is four different square. That is what we told the artist to do. So if, as you have seen here, the artist just drew four squares. Now we can decide to put these squares not in the middle, but at the top right or at the top left or at the center, anywhere we want them to be. And when we put them there, that is what it will give us. Kids, do not forget, coding is fun. Try as many as you can do. This is just to teach you how to draw. No matter how you have done, do not be discouraged. Always remember persistence. After you have finished drawing, just click on finish and it will automatically congratulate you that you have done something great. So next time, we are going to continue from where we stop. Bye.